Thank you for joining us today for the first episode of our new podcast, Tough Conversations with CIOs. I'm Alexis Williams, Global Head of Strategic Alliances here at Atlassian, and today I'll be joined by Christian Kelly, Strategy Managing Director at Accenture, and our very special guest, Wendy Zacchio, CIO of Zealous. We're coming to you today from beautiful Sonoma, California, to discuss the challenges CIOs face in achieving enterprise agility across the enterprise and how to overcome them. During this chat, Wendy gives us insight into her new role and what being agile means to her organization. We hope you enjoy. Welcome everyone. We are here in beautiful Sonoma with Wendy, CIO of Zealous. Wendy, welcome. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, look at this beautiful place. I mean, amazing. So the oldest winery in, in uh, California. Pretty wild. Oh, it's pretty amazing. 1800 something. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about Zealous, PE backed healthcare, FinTech company, high year over year growth. Um, can you tell us a little bit more? What's the company's mission? What attracted you to the company? Sure. So Zealous is focused on modernizing the financial aspects of the healthcare journey. So if you think about it as a consumer, it's a nightmare every time you have to engage in any part of the healthcare journey, where you're talking, whether you're talking about preventative or you're actually um, seeking critical care or, or anything in between. So telling you a little, little story for myself, um, what, what is really important to me is uh, my son, um, he's all grown up now, but, uh, as he was growing up, he was diagnosed with a very severe illness and caught us all by surprise. It was a very, very scary time. And I remember thinking that all I wanted to do was make sure he was okay. But the reality was that you're trying to deal with, okay, well, the insurance company covers this. Um, and but you need to be on Medicare for that, or this needs to come out of your pocket. Well, what about your deductibles? And everybody's debating who's got what covered. And this is where Zealous comes in. And this is one of the reasons I'm so excited about it because Zealous is focused on working with the providers. So your doctors, your hospitals, et cetera, and the payers. So your insurance companies, et cetera. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is though, by working with the providers and payers, it makes it easier for the consumers like you and me and like my son, when he's going through this, to be able to focus on his health, not on, okay, how am I gonna pay all this? What is this explanation of benefits? What is this EOB? What is all this stuff? And what am I supposed to do with it? So by partnering with the providers and payers in the industry, we're able to make it better for our consumers. And just a, a little tidbit for you, 100 million consumers. We are empowering 100 million consumers right now. Um, it's it, it's just it's just an amazing place to be. Very excited. And for you all, how technology driven is that business? So and we are fintech. So the the mm -hmm. exciting part is we have healthcare experts, people who are truly experts in their fields, who are working with technology to bring this vision to life and to really make it tangible for the consumer. I just I love the concept of the last thing that you should be worrying about when you're dealing with health and with with family is the actual administrative part trying to figure out what do I owe like what like I just there's so many times I've walked into the doctor's office three three young kids still yeah. right and how do I track what I owe it's just it's a nightmare and, and I can only imagine a world where you're way more focused on not having to worry about that and for very much focused on how do I get better how do I, I make sure my family gets better or whatever it may be so I'm excited to be part of that journey yeah. And to really be able to to bring all the power of technology to to the forefront to make that sure that we can deliver on that that vision. So it's pretty exciting. Super exciting. It's very exciting. It sounds like. Well, and when I told you in Vegas, I said I couldn't tell you it, you know any of the details, but I was really excited, and so I'm really delighted to to be part of the team now. Awesome. Well, congratulations. We're Thank glad you. that the cat's finally out of the bag. <laughs> we were waiting for a solid month. Yeah. yeah. Um, so top three for you, early days. What's on your priority list to tackle? So, um, you know, it's, it's fascinating with the company growing as fast as Zealous is growing, they've done a lot of organic and inorganic growth. And in order to sustain their, their trajectory, our trajectory now, uh, the key is to look at all these acquisitions, mm -hmm. um, all of the original technology that was there and really look at how do we streamline this? You know, how do we modernize, simplify, uh, just some incredible technology solutions in place. But some of this is, so this would be number two, some of it's about tools. It's about making sure that you have the right tools to really streamline. And again, 
you're talking about a lot of technologies that were already doing just fine, or technology companies, they were doing just fine. But when you start to connect them all together, in order to make Zealous as powerful as it can possibly be, we need to simplify and rationalize those tools. And then the third thing, as always, is technology is fantastic, but it's all about the people. Yep. It's really all about the people. How do I, you know, I want to connect with everybody, not only the, the people on the technology team, but also that all the wonderful people across Zealous and really understand where I can help. Yeah, we talk a lot about in the Accenture Atlassian partnership, how we're not solving a technology problem, we're solving a people problem. Um, and so CK, I just want to get from your lens, can you walk them through what we've done, what we're taking out to our clients together in the market? Yeah, and I'm going to play off something that you said, Wendy, and give a bit of a personal story and why I'm here, and then I'll talk about that. You know, the personal story is I've spent the last 20 years helping product teams on product strategy and how to grow their engineering teams and how to get better at, at, at engineering. And that's what I did for a living until we started doing this. And what I found over and over and over again was you could implement processes, you could implement tools, but what you really had to do was change hearts and minds. And you had to get leaders to sort of get out of their own way. And there's great stories about reinvention at companies when the leaders empowered all those people who knew what they were doing and so desperately wanted to contribute to the organization and removed the part of the, the friction and drag on the organization in old processes, old ways of working. So how I relate that back to what we're doing is we're looking at enterprise agility as not, not a tool-based thing, not a process-based thing, but a people enablement-based thing. Mm -hmm. Sure, the tools are important. Getting the right patterns and practices for how you implement things, how you get your ways of working locked in are super, super important but they enable people to do their best work. Mm -hmm. So I think we were talking about it earlier this week as we were working with our team. It's all about can we help any company figure out how to be the best version of themselves and how to be successful, whatever that means to them. It might mean better revenue or you know, higher revenue growth. It may be cost containment. It may be employee satisfaction or employee success, but whatever speed that to market, means, whatever speed it might to be. market, yeah. right? We have to be very clear that enterprise agility is different in that we want to deliver that. And so, yeah, what are we? We're six months in from when we decided to go all in together between Accenture and Atlassian on this. Like, we're in the business of changing companies. Yeah. That's what we're in the business of. Mm -hmm. So I, like, I couldn't be more happy that, uh, we're going to do some straight talk about that. We are, yes. Well, I was going to say the funny part about what you just said, when I think about the leaders, you said, you know, the leaders have to get out of their own way. I don't actually think that there are people sitting around, you know, stroking their chins and, and having an evil laugh about, you know, getting in people's way. I think it's that fear of, well, if I just let go and say, okay, you guys just handle it, that they won't get the outcomes they need. And I think that's where the, the agile part of the equation the right tool, the right process, the right mm -hmm. engagement is key to make sure that everybody's on the same page. You can't just have everybody running in multiple different directions. So I think leaders sometimes are afraid that when we say agile, people are just gonna run off and do their own thing because they don't have the controls that they have in a more waterfall or I'll say more traditional um, finance business case approved yeah. approach. Well, this is what really struck us when we started talking about this topic area in Las Vegas is that, yeah, I think there's been this mythology and I love to bust myths. Mm -hmm. I think there's been this mythology for the last, let's say 15 years that, you know, company X or company Y, if they were in the Valley or they were everybody's favorite startup or they're on the cover of Wired magazine, that they had it all together, that they knew exactly how to do ex what you're saying. And the reality is a lot didn't and a lot weren't able to get out of their own way and they weren't able to establish the ways of working that were sustainable and scalable and scalable yep. and so that to me is like okay how do we help people really truly understand what are like the rigor of that because there is this the mythology is oh out in silicon valley or out in the wild wild west it was just because they had all the great people 
And the ones who consistently did well, and to this day consistently do well, are actually co companies that are built on systems. Systems of accountability, yes. systems of responsibility, that are built into the processes and tools. At least that's been my yeah, that's been my experience versus, you know, everybody's just smart and so the wild, wild west works. Mm -hmm. I also think there's that team dynamic. So when you talk about um, enterprise agility and you put the agile piece in there, mm -hmm. a lot of that is about having a small number of people with a common goal. Um, they're they're managing a common asset, a common product, et cetera. So if you if you truly think about it in those terms, a lot of those companies that do well in Silicon Valley or wherever else it's that they started as smaller companies and so they kept that as part of their culture, that small, tight, focused, okay, this is what we need to do and then this is what we need to do. I do wonder a bit if the larger companies understand that the value that a business person says, well, the reason I don't wanna give this function to IT is because I'll lose it. Yeah. It's really that you're talking about having a smaller team that's very focused and they're empowered to be focused mm -hmm. and I think that there's an element of that in the mix as well. I don't know if that's the same thing you find, but that's what I've observed. I think what we've found together is, and the data says it, uh, uh, there's some industry data that came out just a couple months ago, not even a couple, a couple weeks ago, oh, about the idea that like it's in the mid 50s of companies that are actually achieving their outcomes through really? like team level agile. And I look at that and I like, say, wow, that is, that's basically saying, after we were talking about it earlier, 22 years, we, you know, we have a kid out of college in team level agile, and at the enterprise level, basically agile is a failure mm -hmm. if you're not, if you're at 50% to the outcomes that your other CXOs need. And it's a, that sort of struck us um, as sort of a calling out of where we're at and delivering those outcomes. Well, I do think there's something about Agile being an IT thing. Mm -hmm. It's, well, Agile is for IT delivery. Yeah. And in reality, it's not. It's, um, obviously, you guys are the experts. I just live it. Um, it, it. It's about forgetting about work structures. It's saying, listen, we have to be there together in order to deliver the value, the actual business value. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I think translating that to, to the business side, why should you care about Agile? Like, a lot of times I think there's a layer that's so lost in tra translation for the business side, like IT saying you need to care about Agile and then being like, okay, great, um, why, right? And I, I do think we've talked a lot about how we can help translate. Um, we were joking earlier, just enterprise agility, it's 22 years old, it should, you know, just graduated from college, now it needs to go off and get a job. Um, in your lens, what do you see this, this partnership bringing together, hopefully assuming you do, the Accenture Atlassian partnership uh, for, for customers like yourself? So I appreciate the question. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna tell you a little story about yeah. um, uh, a pr my prior company. Uh, we had this incredible partnership with Accenture and Atlassian does play a role, obviously, because of, of Jira and some of the other tools, uh, Confluence, et cetera, that mm -hmm. we've used. So we didn't have this shared partnership of Accenture and Atlassian together on enterprise agility, yeah. but we did have an incredible partnership. And let me describe it this way. What we needed to do is we needed to completely modernize a significant portion of our technology. And at the same time, we needed to drive to an agile way of working. Mm -hmm. And we were doing this globally uh, with a team that was around the world. So multiple different time zones, uh, multiple different types of teams, multiple different types of technologies. And my belief is, again, it's all about people. So I'm, I'm very cautious when I engage a partner to help us because that partnership sometimes doesn't work. So if you are not very thoughtful about it, it can actually do more harm than good. Yeah. So I actually had a, a a colleague at Accenture that I had been introduced to and I reached out to her and said, listen, I've, I've got a problem, I really need some help here. And she introduced me to uh, the head of, of our account and I sat down with him and I said, listen, if we're going to use Accenture for this, I need your best, I need the best mm -hmm. of the best. And every, every client always says that, right? We want your A team, don't give us your B team, your right. C team. Right. We want your A plus team, right? So. I went through the, the normal steps and I was waiting to see what would happen. Well, I flew to London 
for a meeting, and while I was there, they had this this gentleman. His name is Guy. His he's a guy. His, his name is actually Guy. Mm -hmm. um, he showed up in the room while we were there for another meeting, and said, "I'm here to help." And he showed up not just with that agile expertise, not just with that how do we use the right tools, use the right processes, etc. But he, he was empowered to sit at my leadership table and be the person in the room that said, okay, are we thinking enough about organizational change management? You talk about enterprise agility. Are, right. What are we doing to bring the business along? Are we, are we raising our hands enough mm -hmm. to really make sure that we're doing this the right way? But I also remember that, and by the way, we were successful. It was, it was, a, it was a great story. Um, but I'll never forget that, that that Accenture leader guy, that he was on the phone calls with us, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., as we were driving the, the technology change but he was also right there with us on the Agile journey. And so I think choosing your right partner and making sure that you have a, a strong partner at the right time for where you are in your maturity curve mm -hmm. is very important. And I'm very fascinated to see what this partnership between Accenture and Atlassian do. Well, that sounds like Accenture on its best day. And That's I amazing. think we have to live up to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in this kind of thing, it's been my experience that it's all about the team. It's all about the humans. You know, it's all about leaning into deeply, deeply get into the problem space with your client and understand what it's going to take to make everybody successful. It's not having to be the smartest person in the room or the best capability model. Like all those things come. It's about really, really understanding and partnering with your client. Well, and that's why, too, this partnership leans so heavily on Accenture's talent and organization practice because of that human element of change. That's that's critical in, in what we're be, being able to deliver to our clients. So um, absolutely agree. It, it was a heck of an experience. I can honestly say that uh, I've never seen anything like it. Say more about that. How so? The way that Accenture leaned in, first of all, they gave us top-notch people. There was no doubt about it. Um, and while I, I call out Guy Player as, as mm -hmm. the key person there, as the, as the leader, he also made sure that we had excellent people at the table. Everybody was in it together. I think that's the key. So mm. when I think about um, Agile, and I go back to something you said a little bit ago, when I think about Agile, when I think about delivery, it's about blurring those lines. It's mm -hmm. about saying we are one team. Right. Um, we may be 10 scrum teams. We may have 100 products or whatever it is that we're delivering. You can wear an Accenture t-shirt, you can wear an Atlassian t-shirt, yeah. I can wear a Zealous t-shirt, but when we're working on something together, we're all one team shirt. Right. Yeah. I think it's successful when people come together and they're talking and you don't know where they're from. That's right. That's the one team like at its at its best. That's right. Yeah. And and when you throw the business piece into the mix, mm -hmm. I think that's when you really have the magic. And we were really fortunate in 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 my my prior role, and I look to recreate this at Zealous, that we had a couple of business people who understood mm -hmm. how to do it. They'd done it before, and so they leaned in. They they blurred the lines of their own roles to lean in and find ways to help us with product ownership and really change that dynamic so that it wasn't just, oh, well, Agile is IT's problem. Yeah. So Big we were difference. just quoting, or, and you brought it up before we started filming, the classic movie Office Space and like, you know, the requirements thing. Like, What, what go, is it that you say you do here? Right, or, you know, I don't do the requirements, I just take the requirements. Well, do you write them down, right? right? No, my secretary. <laughs> my secretary. Did. So when you've, and I know you've been doing this for a while, like, how important is that, that the other C-level leaders that you're working with mm -hmm. actually truly lean in on the business problem and what happens when they don't? So I think it's absolutely critical. I would say, and this is a, a and but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not enough to assume that just because they have gotten where they are that they understand why it's so important. It's a critical role that I believe a CIO plays and that is as a translator to help them understand mm -hmm. that this is really, we're going to deliver more for you faster with better quality by using this if we do it right. And by doing it right, it means truly chucking out old ways of doing things, getting away from that waterfall mentality that right. here, 
that here's a business problem to IT, go solve it. But really having that product ownership, that connective tissue, using the right tools, using the right processes, making sure everybody's on one team, that's where I think the CIO role uh, plays that role to, to help the business understand. When it doesn't happen, you basically have what, you know, I, I don't know what it's called in other circles. I call it Wagile hmm. or Wagile Fall. Hmm. It's basically, it's supposed to look like Agile, but it's really just a series of people running around saying they're doing sprints. And in reality, you still have your gates all mm -hmm. the way through, and it's just another waterfall project. So, so I love that myth busting because when I started working with more IT teams than product teams, I was used to working with product teams that truly understood how to go figure out through things like customer jobs or value propositions or choose your way of doing it. But you had people who took a deep empathetic understanding of the customer problem, whatever that customer was. And then I walked into a world where people were like the traveling bill of customer requirements mm -hmm. that nobody nobody understood. would own or yeah. understood. And now we have, because our industry is very much about buzzwords, now we have, okay, project to product, and we're trying to train people how to get in that mindset. Like you've had to do that. What's the experience of training people to have that empathy and understanding of how to get to customer problems and jobs or scenarios or whatever the thing is. So I know we've um, we talked a little bit about uh, name dropping beforehand, so I apologize. I'm going to drop another name in here, uh, but this is a, a company name. So I actually started my career at Fidelity Investments, and one of the things that we learned there um, is that always begin with a customer in mind, mm -hmm. and the customer is the end user. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about picking up your phone and you're the end user or you're talking about, in the case of Zealous, it is the member who is going through the, the financial healthcare journey. It's, it's begin with that end customer in mind. Mm -hmm. And I truly think that that's part of bringing people from a project mentality to a product mentality is really having that connective tissue that says, okay, a product is about how are we solving this problem for the customer, that end user, and that's what I think is fundamentally key if enterprise agile is or enterprise agility is going to work. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious what you guys think. Yeah, I, I mean, so I think I want to be super sensitive to the market conditions of today as well, right? Like we're in this post-pandemic era, highly distributed teams. Um, you know, there's there's layoffs left and right and so there's just a lot of a lot of volatility and the reality is that that most transform agile transformations do fail so when we talk about enterprise agility we, we had a really good session yesterday as a team talking about what is the actual problem that we are trying to solve for mm -hmm. what is enterprise agility and it, like change is really really hard um, it's complex there's fear in it you talked a little bit on that fear and so from an enterprise agility perspective, I think it's really just about how we are enabling our customers to jointly change together through the, through the, the human side of it and also just achieve the business outcomes and really focusing on those. I don't know if you want to expand on that. Yeah, I mean, I'll start with some data. We, our CEO, Julie Sweet and team just released data uh, about our position of where things are going cross industry. And some of the data I read was absolutely staggering. Mm. Like the level of disruption is up, I think it's like 200% since 2017. Interesting. From 2011 mm -hmm. to 2016, it had risen at about 4%, and those were turbulent times. And then you go 200% from then, and so we, we were looking at it as a firm saying, what is this all about and how do you make sense of the world? And we came up with these sort of five macro forces that yeah. are changing the world. And two of them really struck us when we were thought, thinking about enterprise agility. One is that like the old days of transformation, one and done, they never were real anyway, mm -mm. but they're certainly not real now. And now we're going through, it's not a transformation yeah. program. We're going for, through total enterprise reinvention and this ongoing tech revolution that CTOs and CIOs and now even the rest of the C-suite has to really understand this isn't going away. It's not a once in a 10 year thing. And so we look at it and say, okay, well, if you're gonna do total enterprise reinvention, your business models are changing, your revenue models are changing, your customers are changing. How does enterprise agility fit into that? Like it, for me, 
mental model is help you be your best company, but it's also your secret weapon to getting your whole organization to respond to and, be and to be adaptive mm -hmm. to yep. that. And so that's why, like we were talking about, it, it's not a tool thing yeah. and we're not diminishing the tools. I'm all about systems. The tools create systems that reinforce the right behaviors, but you still have to have the mindsets and behaviors, the psychological safety to, you know, for the least paid person in the room to say, this stuff, I could use other words, this stuff is <laughs> bananas, we shouldn't be doing it. Like that's what- You were doing a Gwen Stefani riff there, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> bananas, bananas. No, that's right. <laughs> As a leading question, I think like what you're doing with your new company is like reinventing healthcare in many ways. Well, I think- Through technology. Absolutely, that is, what, that is what Zealous is doing. I mean, when we say we're modernizing healthcare, the, the financial experience of healthcare, there's, there's no, I know it sounds like a lofty goal, but it's true. We're actually making it possible for people to be empowered to make good decisions for themselves and their families because we're simplifying it. We are removing barriers. We're using data to drive better decision making, to, to, buy, to drive better um, transparency. So I think, I love your, your point about it's not just that transformation is one and done and it never was. I think it's really about, when you think about the concepts of Agile, it is all about incremental delivery. Mm -hmm. And when you think mm -hmm. about what we're trying to get done as we go through these different ceremonies and all the lingo that you use in, in the Agile space, it's really about, okay, we're, we're constantly, persistent scrum teams, the, the idea that, okay, we have, the, we've had, we have these technology assets forever and we're delivering, but we've constantly got to grow. We have to improve them, groom them, make them better so that ultimately we're always meeting the end user where they are. Sustainable innovation. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I'm totally Just taking that. Just about it. I'm taking it. Take I'm, it. Steal okay. it. It's yours. I'll give you credit. <laughs> I'll use it. Alexis, you and I talk about this all the time, this idea um, of the talent side of that. And I love that you do a lot of myth busting. One of our five forces is this uh, macro force that Julie and our CIO and our CHRO talk a lot about is the talent side of this. Can you share a little bit like what are you seeing in what do they call it? Healthcare tech now, like FinTech, it's healthcare tech. Like what are you seeing is the the talent issues there. So I don't know if there are issues as much as, and I'm not sure if it's new, so bear with me. This yes. is just me, we said we were gonna do real straight talk, so yeah. this talk. is just my view. Um, I actually think most people really want to continue on the journey, and as technologists, um, or maybe it's hype, I'm not sure, but it seems like new tech is so scary, you know, I'm not going to say how old I am, but let's just say that I'm not a millennial. So I'm not, a, I'm not scared of tech. In fact, I'm pretty good at it. I got this. But I think that the assumption is that, well, if somebody's been at a company for a while and you're bringing in new technical solutions, that they're not going to get it. Uh -huh. So it's really incumbent upon us in the, in the technology space, in my world, I view it as incumbent upon me as a leader and, and on my leaders um, to bring people on the journey, help them understand where all their knowledge and experience can really make a difference. Don't give up. We'll, we'll help you learn the new technology. Everybody can learn and adapt if they want to. Human beings are actually really good at that when they choose to, once they get over the fear of change. So I, I don't know that there's necessarily an issue with talent right now. I do think it's about leaders leaning in mm -hmm and really helping people understand why mm -hmm. their cheese is moving, why the, the, their, the transformation is taking place. Although, as you say, sustainable innovation, mm -hmm. it's really about driving the change over the long haul. But some of these people that we're talking about have been in their industry or been in their company for a long time and they have a wealth of knowledge. And to dismiss them as if, oh, you can't figure out the technology is very short-sighted some data for you two to react to then is in part of that report that Julie released, we actually classified companies as reinventors to optimizers. We had three categories and we looked at it and we said those who are willing to do what you're talking about, 
looking at completely reinventing their companies, mid-20s higher in revenue growth, mid-20s higher in cost optimization, mid-20s percentage higher in, in, uh, in balance sheet improvement compared to, and this is cross industry, mm -hmm. right, uh, than those who are just trying to optimize the current environment. And to me, that speaks to, you had to enable your talent to do that. You had to embrace the new technology. You had to be willing to reinvent yourself. And the talent had to want to go on the journey. Yeah. I think that that's, that's really part of it, isn't it? Yeah, you absolutely need to be all bought in. Again, one team, like it's, it's so critical and that's why the, there is such a human element in enterprise agility. Very fascinating.